All right, this is going to be Chapter 9, the General and Special Census, and this is going to be Part 3. Uh, 5.0, Equilibrium and Hearing. Um, anatomy of the Ear, Equilibrium, Hearing, and then Hearing Loss will be covered in this section. 5.1, Anatomy of the Ear. You have the external ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. And the external ear is pretty much the, the outer surface or the external area. A uh, fleshy oracle surrounds the entrance, which leads to uh, the external acoustic canal. And this has a bunch of glands in it, and they're ceruminous glands, and they produce earwax. And then at the end of this, we have something called a tympanic membrane. Um, if you have children and they've ever had otitis media, this is what they look at. It's inflammation from a bacterial infection on the tympanic membrane. And it's a thin sheet that separates the external ear from the middle ear. Uh, the middle ear connects to the nasopharynx, um, is the auditory tube slash a station tube. And this pretty much uh, enables the ear and the nasopharynx to equalize the pressure in and outside. So this is if you perform Valsalva or pinch your nose and act like you're blowing it, you'll actually pop your ears. Uh, so if you're in an airplane or something and your ears feel like they have a lot of pressure, uh, just do that and it should equalize the pressure. Uh, they also have the auditory ossicles in there, which are called the malleolus, the incus, and the stapes. 5.4, the inner ear. And this is just a general overview. We're fixing to see some pictures here in a second. Uh, sense of equilibrium, and this is a membranous labyrinth, a bunch of little nooks and crannies in this thing. Uh, collection of tubes and chambers, endolymph, uh, fluid filled bony labyrinth. Uh, the bony labyrinth is in three parts, which is the vestibule, the semicircular canals, and the cochlea. And this is kind of all of it here together. The oracle, this is the um, external ear. And the external ear runs from the tympanic membrane to essentially the outside. And then we have the middle ear, which has three parts. Uh, malleolus, incus, and the stapes. Malleolus, incus, and the stapes. And then we have the inner ear, which houses semicircular canals, the vestibule, and the cochlea. And this is where our hearing actually occurs at, is in this section here. So just a brief overview. We hear sounds. It pushes on the tympanic membrane. It moves the malleolus, incus, and stapes. This performs pressure waves in this fluid-filled area, and then is transferred into here, and this essentially picks up the information and goes to the brain with it. Now, this area here has a lot to do with balance. Uh, there's little hair-like fibers in there, so as the fluid moves in one direction or the other, it controls our balance. Uh, structures of the middle ear, uh, malleolus, incus, and the stapes. And this is the tympanic membrane. Again, this is going to vibrate and move these, which this area here, in, in this area, is where the uh, vestibule and the cochlea were, and the semicircular canals would have been up here. So balance, and then auditory information to the vestibular cochlear nerve, which is one of your cranial nerves. Uh, 5.7, equilibrium, semicircular ducts, and the vestibule. Uh, two aspects of equilibrium here. We have dynamic equilibrium, which is head and bodily, body suddenly moved. And then we have static equilibrium, which kind of maintains your posture. Without the static equilibrium, we would kind of tip over and fall on our, fall on our face if we would. Uh, Semicircular ducts, uh, rotations, motion uh, is what these kind of cover. Anterior, posterior, and lateral semicircular ducts. And there's hair cells that are attached to the walls of the ampulla. Uh, form a raised structure known as a uh, crista. And I'm going to show you these. These are in the semicircular canals. And these have perilymph, bony labyrinth on the outside, perilymph, and endolymph. And 
this is your membranous labyrinth that kind of runs all through this. These are your semicircular ducts here. And in these, we have little hair-like objects that's down here. Now, as the fluid moves in one direction or the other, what this does is this tells us or gives us a sense of position. Um, and this is the sensory nerve ending here that would allow us to, to know that and, and locate uh, where we're actually at in relationship to the information that we're getting. Um, example of this, that's why if you spin somebody around circularly in a chair uh, and then suddenly stop them, they've lost their balance for a while. That's because the fluid in there is still spinning and giving their brain information that they're still moving, which they may not actually be. Uh, 511, the vestibule responds to gravity and gives information to the vestibular cochlear nerve. And this is going to respond to gravity, and we're talking about pretty much sudden movements here. And movement of these little items here that are on top of these information sensors. These are those little hair-like. And what this does is this will tell us direction and rotation as far as how the fluid is moving. So if the fluid moves this way because of a quick jerk the other way or either or vice versa it sends information to our brain from the movement of these hairs uh, 5.13 hearing uh, cochlear duct the hearing process auditory pathways and auditory sensitivity uh, 5.14 cochlear duct uh, hair cells in the cochlear duct are located in the organ of cordy uh, when this membrane is vibrated from pressure waves or sound is stimulated, the cochlear branch or, and, and sound is stimulates the cochlear branch nerve. Ah, I'll spit this out in a second. Uh, 5.15, and this is figure 9.39-31 in your book, the cochlea and the organ of Cordy. And how this works is, and we'll see better here in just a few more slides, is um, in these... Um, as the malleolus incus and stapes provide stimulus to this area here, it forms pressure waves. And these pressure waves move or come across this tectoral membrane. And what this does is this provides uh, sound or what we perceive as sound, and it will stimulate this nerve. And then the nerve will take it actually to the brain. The hearing process, uh, the detection of sound and pressure waves and cycles uh, is, what it's, it's con, um, is what it's called. And, term, and this term, cycles, is pretty much used by physicists to describe sound waves. Uh, cycles per second equal hertz, which represents the frequency of the sound. We perceive this in pitch. So if someone has a high-pitched or a low-pitched sound, sounding voice, that's how we're going to perceive it is the amount of hertz or cycles per second. 5.17 hearing process. Uh, sound waves arrive at the tympanic membrane. Uh, movement of the tympanic membrane causes displacement of the auditory ossicles, and this is going to be malleolus incus and stapes. Uh, movement of the stapes in the oval window establishes pressure waves. Pressure waves distort the basilary membrane on their way to the tympanic duct. Vibration of the basilary membrane causes vibration of the hair cells against the tectoral membrane, and this causes stimulation of the cochlear branch. 5.18 auditory pathways, afferent fibers form the cochlear branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. And this is a quick overview of this. So sound wave enters into the external uh, uh, acoustic canal, bumps up against the tympanic membrane, vibrates the malleolus, incus, and stapes. This transfers it to the oval window, which will give us pressure waves in this fluid, which then is perceived by the cochlea, and the information is transferred to the cochlear branch of the eighth cranial nerve. 
and put away in our brains, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Clinical note, hearing loss, uh, sensorial neural hearing loss, and this comes from loud noises, and this is caused from damage to the hair cells of the organ of Cordy. So if you've been around guns or loud noises, machinery without hearing protection, sirens, uh, all of these can cause hearing loss from overstimulation and damage to those hair cells. So here we go. Now, all of this has already happened. Come into the auditory canal, tympanic membrane, uh, malleola, syncus, and stapes, uh, vibration and sound waves in the cochlea. This transfers the information to the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve. As this is coming in, cochlear nuclei, nucleus, and then this is going to transfer across the thalamus and into this section of brain tissue, which perceives our hearing. That, that's the reason if someone takes a good shot to the side of their head, they can actually lose uh, sensorial hearing or have uh, hearing loss due to an acute injury. Uh, 5.22, aging in the senses, and everything declines with age. Uh, smell, unfortunately, uh, sticks around. Population of the olfactory receptors is regularly replaced, so this means that you're going to essentially have a good sense of smell uh, probably throughout life. However, taste declines with age. This is the reason that as we get older in life, 70, 80, maybe 90-year-olds, some of the taste buds go and the dietary choices uh, decline uh, for, for geriatric patients. Uh, they can eat things that we probably couldn't have managed to eat at age 30 or 40 uh, due to a decline in the amount of taste buds or gustatory cells. Uh, 5.25 vision, we have lens and neural impairment. Uh, cataracts, lens loses some of its elasticity and shape, so we lose some of our eyesight. Also, as far as neural impairment goes, they can get retinopathy, and this will cause impairment in their actual vision as well. Uh, 5.26 hearing. Tympanic membrane loses some of its elasticity, and this pretty much means that those high-pitched sounds um, are pretty much gone. So if you have a Bose sound system that really throws a lot of high-pitched sounds in there, um, the 80, 90-year-old populace, so even 70-year-old populace, may not be able to enjoy those because the tympanic membrane has lost its elasticity and the sound quality. They're just not hearing it at that point. Uh, Prebucusis is hearing loss with aging. And this is pretty much a summary. So this is going to summarize and kind of end <clears throat> part three of chapter nine. Uh, understand the differences between the general and special senses. Uh, identify the receptors and describe how they function. Understand how the body processes the different senses. Recognize the anatomy of the eyes and ears. Understand how aging affects the senses. And these are terms to know, and I'm going to briefly go over these, but these should be located on the actual uh, digital flashcards, um, G Flash Pro or G Flash Plus. Uh, accommodation, which is a visual acuity uh, of sorts. Cochlea, which we just got through talking about. Fovea, uh, focal point in the eye. Gustata gustatation, which is taste. Iris, which is part of the eye. Macula. Macular degeneration, again, or the eye. Nocio receptors, uh, these are going to be um, pain receptors and sensation receptors. Olfaction, which is olfactory or smell. Proprioception, this is going to be position of your body. Uh, pupil, which is going to constrict or dilate, uh, adjusting the amount of light that comes into the eye. Retina, which is at the back of the eye. Um, the sclera, which is the white of the eye, and that pretty much covers the amount of terms. So please look over those, and you should find the digital flashcards actually on G Flash. If not, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Name is Roy Smith, 405-219-7613, or you can email me at smithrdimsa.net. Thank you.